Hello everyone. Welcome to the daily current affairs session by Neo IAS. Today we are dealing with the current affairs of 9th November 2018 and the topics are Hazaras, International Energy Agency, India China Sugar Exporting, Rikne, Risa and Debarma and regarding the polio vaccine and in map aided program we will be dealing with Budhigandagi and PQR session that is discussing a previous year question. So let's move on to our first topic that is Hasaras. Why this came in news because the Afghan special forces were deployed to beat back Taliban fighters in a district which is heavily populated by the minority Hasaras. And this has raised the fears of ethnic and sectarian violence among the people. So about Hazaras. So, these Hazaras are the Afghanistan's largest ethnic minorities. They account for up to 20 percentage of Afghanistan 30 million inhabitants. They are the descendants of the Mongol King Genghis Khan. The Asiatic features and the language that is a dialect of Persian set them apart from the other Afghans. They occupy the central part of the country. They uh, usually live in the uh, rugged highland region of the country. And this Hazara people, they are primarily Shia type of Muslims. And the major section of this Afghan population consists of the Pashtuns. And these Pashtuns, they follow Pashtu language. And also they follow the Sunni branch of Islam. While this Hazaras, they follow Shia sect of Muslims. This is the great conflict between these two sects of people. Whereas this Taliban people, they were Sunnis and they were in largely, they were in ethnic conflict between these Pashtuns and they have been accused for committing human rights violation against this group. So next we move on to our next topic that is regarding the International Energy Agency. Why this came in news? The Union Cabinet has been apprised for India joining as a member of Advanced Motor Fuel Technology Collaboration Program that is AMF TCP. This AMF TCP it comes under International Energy Agency IEA. So our next slide contains details regarding IEA that is International Energy Agency. So it is a Paris based autonomous intergovernmental organization. So it was established in the framework of OECD. OECD means Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. It was formed in 1974 after the wake of 1973 oil crisis, India has been given an association status. That is, it got the association status with this International Energy Agency since 30 March 2017. This IEA, it acts as a policy advisor to its member states, but also it works with its non-member countries like India. India is not a member with International Energy Agency. It only got an association status. Next, we can look into AMF TCP. AMF TCP stands for Advanced Motor Fuel Technology Collaboration Program. So, it is an international platform for cooperation among countries to promote cleaner and more energy efficient fuels and vehicle technologies. So this aim of TCP it comes under IEA. The government of India has joined this AM of TCP as its 16th member on 9th May 2018. The primary goal is to facilitate the market introduction regarding the advanced motor fuel or regarding some alternate fuel technology. Thus bringing down the emissions for higher fuel efficiency in transport sector. 
So this AM of TCP comes under International Energy Agency. Okay. And our next topic is Rikne, Risa and Debarma. This Rikne, Risa were handicrafted textiles actually. Hmm? They were displayed at the exhibition in Tripura. This showcased the rich legacy regarding the Tripura in its art forms actually. So let's look on to Rikne. Rikne is the traditional dress worn by Tripura women. It is uh, similar to the traditional dress of other indigenous communities in the northeastern. So it usually it is worn like a skirt. It is uh, it has some designs. It is used for covering the lower part of the body, and it is worn like wrapping it around the waist. It is worn along with rasa. So what is rasa? Rasa is a simple cloth that is used as a blouse by wrapping it around the bust. It contains fine intricate designs. These days it is worn over a blouse and on festive occasions only. So our next slide is about Dibarma. Dibarma is a group of generic term. It's a group of uh, people that is it's a generic term applied to a number of ethnic groups predominantly in Tripura. They speak Tibeto-Burman languages and the Burma language then Rikne and Risa is worn by the Debarma tribes and by other tribes in Tripura. Next is the India-China that is regarding the sugar export. Why this came in news because the export of raw sugar from India to China will begin early next year and about the news a contract has been signed regarding the exporting of 50,000 tons of raw sugar this agreement has been signed between ISMA that is Indian Sugar Mills Association and COFCO it is a government of China run public sector company so raw sugar it is the second product after non basmati rice that china will import from india then it is used to reduce the 60 billion trade deficit, deficit that china has with india so let's look uh, some facts regarding the india and the sugar industry india is the largest producer of sugar in the world that with uh, approximately 32 mmt production in 2018 then India produces sugar of all three grades that is raw, refined and white sugar. Indian sugar is also of high quality because it is dextrin free. Dextrin is a complicating contaminant that is uh, being used for refining the sugar. Next news is regarding the polio vaccine. Why it came in news because children are getting affected by the live weakened virus that is contained in the oral polio vaccine. What is more on news? This weakened virus occasionally turned neurovirulent and caused vaccine repaired polio virus that, that is VDPV in unprotected children. Let's look into some facts regarding the polio virus history. The first polio vaccine was developed by Jonas Salk in 1955. The OPV was developed by Albert Sabin and came into commercial use in 1961. And they are on the World Health Organization's list of essential medicines. Next is about the polio vaccine. As you all know, it is used to prevent poliomyelitis. It's a type of viral infection. It usually affects children below age 5 then it is the mode of transmission is basically contaminated food and water the primary symptoms include stiffness of the neck fever headache throat pain etc and it can even lead up to paralysis in its later stages there are usually we give two types of vaccine that is inactivated polio virus given by injection that is uh, through intramuscular or uh, intravenous then the second category is the weakened attenuated polio virus that is given by mouth, that is OPV. Then at least 99% people become immune following three doses of inactivated polio vaccine. 
but this oral polio vaccine has been used in a great amount that is it has been used used as uh, suitable for mass vaccination campaigns and uh, it doesn't need the help of any doctors because a good qualified health worker can even give this oral polio vaccine opp is also provided on longer lasting immunity than the some type of ip vaccines and next is the math aided program in that we will be dealing with Budhigandagi. So why this came in news because Nepal restores the cancelled Budhigandagi mega hydropower contract with the Chinese firm that is China Jeshuba Group of Corporation CGGC. It is Nepal's biggest hydropower plant. This 1200 megawatt plant was built across the river Budhigandagi and it is located approximately 50 km towards the west of Kathmandu. And this project is meant to address all acute power shortages that the country is facing about the um, Budhi Gandhagi River. It's a tributary of Gandhagi River in Nepal. It meets Narayani River at Devagat of Shitwen district. And Nepal is looking forward to build a 2.5 billion dam on the river. And the plan and its reservoirs are to be located in Dading and Gorkha district respectively. So earlier, uh, in the mid of 2017, the then Prime Minister of Nepal, that is Kamal Tapa, he already decided to build this Budhigandagi mega hydropower project. But uh, due to some um, political prejudice or some pressure from the rivalry groups, this project was scrapped off. And now the newly Prime Minister, he again restores this cancelled Budhikandagi project. This is the map. Here you can see uh, the site for the Budhikandagi mega hydropower project. Okay. So next is our PQRS session that is discussing a previous year question. And today we will be discussing a question which was asked in 2012. So the question is, which of the following can be threats to the biodiversity of the geographical area. So, the options are global warming, fragmentation of habitat, inversion of alien species and promotion of vegetarianism. And four options are given. The biodiversity of the uh, planet earth, it is in total variability of its life forms. The biodiversity has grown and shrunk in earth's past due to the changes in its abiotic factors such as mass extinction, changes in oxygen levels and changes in sea levels. The cooling and drying has resulted in the catastrophic rainforest collapse and subsequently a great loss of diversity, especially the amphibians. These current threats include uh, natural extinction, pollution, urbanization and uh, inversion of non-native species. It's also to an extent it's a negative impact on the biodiversity. So the answer is A. A means 1, 2 and 3 that is 1 is global warming, 2 fragmentation of habitat and 3 inversion of alien species. All these 3 factors has co contributed to be a threat to the biodiversity of a geographical area. So answer is A. That's all for today's session. Thank you for watching.